I'm really pleased to hand the voice to um, Jennifer Gonzalez. She is an ordinary working class woman, founder of Turf Collective, an organization pursuing guerrilla approaches to fighting trans ideology. Um, they, the Turf Collective hosts semi-weekly chat sessions and is very active um, in mostly in the United States, but also internationally. So thank you so much, Jennifer, Jessica, Jessica, sorry, <laughs> Jessica, for coming and for talking to us today. And I'm going to hand over to you. My name is Jessica Gonzalez. I am, like you said, just an ordinary working class turf with a Facebook account and now activist organizer that just happened to have had a really good year. With a bit of tenacity, but really just a lot of luck, I managed to leverage that Facebook account into what has grown into a small but global army of women involved in every aspect of the fight against the global campaign of female erasure. That small global army is Turf Collective. We now have been lucky enough to have members of Turf Collective at everything from, we, from the We Spa protest in July to the Adrian Harrop Tribunal, which just recently ended. We have women in a lot of places and spaces, and our vision is to have women literally everywhere. I want to very briefly address our name. I'm sure some listeners will take umbrage with an exception to a group of feminists calling ourselves TERFs. We take the name in part to neutralize its use against us, and secondly, frankly, to mark ourselves as the edgy wing of the movement. We can and will do things other groups having relationships and reputations to worry about can't or won't. The accusations of being a turf is not a substantive argument against our positions, and we therefore take on the name to stipulate that yes, we do exclude men, including those that call themselves trans women from our places, spaces, organizing, and feminism outright. There is no need to fight. You win the point. Women are being re-traumatized at rape crisis centers and support groups, sexually assaulted by so-called lesbian men in single sex spaces and all our hard earned social and political allocations, even sports and scholarships are all being hemorrhaged. At a time like this, we refuse to be diverted into a debate about being called TERFs. In fact, if standing for the dignity of these women makes us TERFs, we would be deeply ashamed indeed not to be TERFs. What is Turf Collective? Turf Collective is a group that was born when I had an idea that all we turfs on Facebook that spend so much time trolling trans identity supremacists and even each other might be served by having weekly meetings. The vision was simply for a time and space where we could come together and talk. Something similar to the breakout rooms here at Feminist Question Time, but the goal was to gather women where they already were which of course was Facebook. There was no agenda and no goal, just a sisterhood circle to talk about our struggle against trans ideology. The first step was to make a Facebook group. I did that on April 27. That night, and I'm sure the following day, I proceeded to invite as many TERFs as I could from my Facebook friends list. And of course, anyone that had responded to my Facebook posts about the idea for a video chat group. Four countries on three continents were represented at our initial meeting held on April 29th. It was immediately apparent two meetings per week would be necessary to create an opportunity for as many women across as many time zones as possible to have a time slot that might work for them. The meetings are quite popular with women, with women we consider rad femme royalty stopping by on occasion. We sometimes get as many as 40 women on a single call, I can't recall ever hosting a meeting with less than a dozen women. Next, I'd like to talk about our activism. The original vision for Turf Collective was just, of course, a sort of headquarters for Facebook Turfs. However, in early June, I had an idea that would change who we are and what we do. It turns out that back in 2016, Target, a major box store chain here in the United States, changed its bathroom policy to what we essentially might refer to as self-ID. American conservatives had carried out a massive boycott of Target in response to this new policy. While ultimately the boycott was determined to have a bit of an impact on profits for, for Target, it was not enough to force them to change their policy. In 2018, a man that runs a website 
womanmeansomething.com collected all the news reports of sexual assaults that had taken place within Target stores since the self-ID bathroom policy was imposed. What he found once he could collected all the data was that there was an increase in incidences of voyeurism in changing rooms since Target announced a policy that would allow for people that identify as transgender to use the sex segregated facilities of their choice. Immediately upon stumbling onto an article about this, I thought that TERF should protest by placing many flyers with information from the study at Target stores. I brought the idea to our next meetings and there it was determined that the best way to distribute the flyers was not to put them in the bathrooms as I'd originally envisioned, but instead to place the flyers into the actual merchandise. From there, we were off and running. Listing off all the places in the actual merchandise to be purchased uh, where we could stash the flyer. This way, we were assured that nearly every flyer we placed would be seen by a female customer. I threw together an initial social media post, which included a picture of the flyer and doubles, doubles as the file to be printed to participate and some tips and tricks on how to do it. The flyer simply reads, did you know that since the start of their inclusive bathroom policy in 2016, Target has had a 190% increase in peeping Tom incidents. The evidence for this is cited in two forms. The reader is invited to scan the QR code to be taken directly to the study or to simply type into their browser and visit womenmeansomething.com. All the way to the right in the corner, we take credit for the effort by signing the Flyer Turf Collective in very small print. Some women have expressed an interest in participating but didn't like the fact that our flyer was signed. If a woman won't do the work with our name there, then merely import it into your own picture editing software and white it out. We much rather the work get done. The importance of our name being on there isn't merely a matter of notoriety. It's also important in case any women that are piqued by it or what any women that are already piqued and find it can find us. It's important that leftist women especially are able to easily discover that there is already a movement out there. Before I peeked and started digging around and stumbled onto Deep Green Resistance, Magdalene Burns and Kathy Brennan, I wouldn't have imagined that there were liberals or leftists that are anti-trans ideology. In fact, before I peeked, I didn't even know there was such a thing as radical feminism at all. In light of this, we believe it would be a wasted opportunity to have anyone find the flyer, be intrigued by the information, but dismiss it assuming it must be a right-wing job. In the end, though, we'd rather the information get out and than not get out, and we would sort out right wing and left wing on the back end. The important thing is that we disseminate the information. Anything else comes second. We got a Twitter account to promote the target action and also as a way to be found on the internet by anyone that might come across the flyer. Our Twitter provided us a small but powerful powerful platform from which to promote the target action. And so we did. We tweeted photos and we got that we got back from every drop. We highlighted how easy it was to do and showed photos specifically how and where all the flyers could go. This created excitement around the campaign and encouraged others to participate. Every piece of merchandise we could identify as having an adult human female as its likely buyer became a turf battleground. No jeans back pocket, woman's windbreaker or box of panty liners was safe. To date, we've placed nearly 10,000 flyers in merchandise in Target stores across the country. We've had members do over 50 stores in Vermont, New York, Virginia, Illinois, Minnesota, Washington, California, and others still. We went on like this for months, promoting the protest and showing off our work on Twitter and Facebook, we couldn't have done had all the success, however, without a little help from our enemies. I know of at least <laughs> I know that the, at least a few sisters that come here to Feminist Question Time will be familiar with this tweet, a tweet whose chirp was heard all around the turf world. This confused man found one of our flyers in his bag when he got his online order home. He immediately tweeted to complain about it, including, luckily for us, a photo of the flyer itself. You can see from the image how far that helped word travel. In September, 
our joy turned to trepidation when one of our members, Thistle Pedersen, was charged with a felony in her home state of Wisconsin. Thistle is the founder of WLRN, Women's Liberation Radio News. Thistle has been charged with a hate crime. Her alleged offense having been put, putting up a turf collective sticker on a magazine box. We had a meeting to offer Thistle support and have her tell us about the charges. It was a tense meeting. The worry was visible on everyone's face. Naturally, outrage and indignation also filled the space. We knew that the charges were bogus and just one more example of the targeting both social and legal that feminists face for being feminists, but we had no clue what would happen. The system has the power to do whatever it wants, even what it wants is unjust. The next morning, I watched Thistle's hearing as it happened and recorded the tail end of the decision. The district attorney quickly conceded Wisconsin, sorry, Wisconsin law has no foundation for a charge of a hate crime against turf speech as gender identity is not a class covered by the statute. The judge held that the speech was covered under the first amendment stating free speech doesn't just apply to good speech. It probably applies more to the bad speech. With that, the case was dismissed and Thistle was freed. No matter what comes, turf collective won't wish. Shifting back to our work, I'd like to talk a bit about the campaigns we carry, carry out and why we focus on these kinds of protests. I call our campaigns, whether they be stickering or pamphleting and flyering, paper protests. Soon we will be adding postcards to the list. Paper protests are very useful in that they lean into and take advantage of what we might otherwise consider weaknesses. For example, when carrying out a national or international paper protest, it is a benefit, not a detriment that women are remote from one another. This helps us carry out the protest in more places. This remoteness also serves to signal how our problems aren't localized and highlights that there are women in cities and towns, large and small, all over the world that feel this same way. The other benefit of the paper protests, and this is extremely important, is accessibility to all classes and lifestyles. There is no time frame in which these are, are to be done. And they can be done very cheaply and with relative privacy. You do, you do these protests right in your area and you pick where and when you do your jobs. The facts, they can be printed at home or at a public library or even at a print shop for pennies per sheet highlights the facts that highlights the fact that we are in fact a grassroots movement and are not funded by the right wing as trans supremacists like to claim. I'd like to now show you our latest project. It is a pamphlet suitable for distribution anywhere in the world, but mentions some cases specifically from the US and the UK. It is a trifold pamphlet with six panels jam packed with peaking information. It addresses sports, shelters, child transition, lesbian and gay rights, trans identifying male sexual predators and the differences between trans and intersex. And a whole panel dedicated to the Weasball Flasher, we all now know has a history of sexual offenses. Our sisters across the ocean have also been working on flyers of their own. Their flyers are stunning, and I'd like to show you two examples if I could. A little sister, an absolute powerhouse that is a member of Turf Collective and SX Resistors, brought this to our attention. This flyer was originally the work of Soul Sisters in, in Scotland as part of their Vote With Your Feet campaign. The Essex resistors reworked the flyer for distribution in England. In bullet points, it explains the harms of self-ID and directs the readers on what they can do. I would like to see us do one in this style here. Another one that I really need to mention because this campaign is going on right now so you can still get involved is the All I Want for Christmas campaign by the Women's Rights network. It reads, all I want for Christmas is single sex spaces, then goes on to list where those are being lost. It also cites sexual assault stats for mixed sex spaces. This one also tells the reader what they should be doing. It's really nicely done and I encourage everyone to check out the all I want for Christmas hashtag. There are many women all over the world that are doing pro paper protests, but if we really want to grow the movement, we must all do even more. And it's easy enough, it's an easy enough activity that we really all can. Use our materials or make your own, but please put papers and stickers everywhere you go. Since we do not have traditional media, social media, or even and even fringe media outlets won't touch us, we have to get the word out. 
into our communities ourselves. Find ways to incorporate it into your life in a way that works for you, but we have to do it because no one else will do it for us. The other side has massive money and platforms and all we have is that we're right. Luckily for us, that's all we'll need. Before I close, I want to take a moment to thank each and every member of Turf Collective for your dedication to the group. No sister was ever under any obligation to join me in my silly little idea. There was never any promise or even prospect of success in or recognition for any of our endeavors, but you came anyway and you still do. You showing up with your best ideas, most incisive critiques, as well as, of course, your dedication to the tedium of printing, cutting, and folding thousands of pieces of paper have made 2021 the best year of my life. Thank you.